Hey, good afternoon, and welcome back to Manor Lords. We're going into episode two today, uh, a couple days apart, because this weekend I actually ended up having to have aura surgery. Ended up breaking a tooth. But, let's continue off where we were. Uh, Strongland is what I decided to call this safe. But, we managed to do a small village. We've got our basic burgages down. We've got a lot of production up and ready. We do need to start increasing our food and fuel in preparation for the winter. Keep here. Go ahead and keep foraging because whenever the uh, summer ends, then we're going to be completely out of berries. So I just want to grab as many as I can for now. And where's our granary? Right here. Put someone in there as well. Speed up time. The biggest thing about your granary is when you start having a full pantry, you're going to want to have someone in your granary to take it back and forth. Because as soon as this fills up, they stop. I'm not sure if they have it set for them to, when it's full, they just immediately take it over. But what I have noticed is people that work in your granaries and at your storehouses definitely carry more than people from the, the regular jobs. So let's just say that our person here, let's see here. Fritz, let's just say Fritz goes out, he picks up the berries from here, he only carries one berry. But, people that work at the granary can usually carry three to five. There are some cases where I've seen them pick up ten items off the ground, but I'm not entirely sure how that works. Sometimes it just feels vastly different. Yeah, because I mean, look, we went up to 21. We were at 25, so maybe they're doing just one at a time. Yeah, we're, we're bringing back more berries than they're pulling in. Okay. Let's take a look here. All right, another burger's plot just went up. This up here tells you how many new houses you're building. We've got 15 houses, and I have seven families. So that just tells her off the bat that we don't really need to build for a while it would be nice to keep on top of it but we need to focus on uh ooh, don't buy bandits we need to focus on wood cutting that way we have fuel for later nice. we do have an unassigned now because they just moved in Let's look at our supplies 28 planks my word charcoal okay what do I need to get you to the next level? Alright, so as we see here, we have water access, church level, fuel stall, food stall, and clothing. Now, from everything that I've done with the tannery, this should allow us to start our first level of clothing. Marketplace is up. We want to get that to the next level. But let's go ahead and move somebody out of the granary so we can go ahead and start working on that. We want to have at least one unassigned right now. All right, clothing stall up and ready. That will go up here in just a little bit. Linen, leather, and yarn. Leather is the easiest one to do first off. Now the church level, let's see here. We need to go to residential and pick up our church. So the church will reach the entire village wherever it is as long as it's within this region. If you wanted to, you could put it here and it would still count for all these houses down here because... They're going to go to church regardless. They don't care where it's at. I, just for aesthetics, I like keeping it near the market and towards the main road where the King's Road is. I feel like having it here just kind of feels right. Because it's right in the middle of our three intersections. Our three-point intersection, rather. So let's go ahead and put that down. All right. New family started moving in, so here that gives us eight families. We got two people working right now. That's useful because now we all have two oxes back and forth. Double the build speed. Right, clay and stone. I do need to start working on stone.
I got eight large spears, or eight large shields and eight spears left. Press B to take a look. Let's see here. Okay. So one thing to keep in mind, like I said, we're going to start seeing uh, Raider messages pop up soon. We did see that we had brigands pop up nearby, which is good that they're this close. I'm going to assume that they're going to go for this one first. What I'm going to tell you is it is okay to lose maybe a month's worth of production to get your money in. Absolutely, when they come in, they always spawn from here or here. It's usually pretty universal. They're going to spawn in the territory. That way, whenever you spawn in your own mercenaries, they come in over here. When they come in, the first thing they do is it'll say, another leader's army was spotted, and they start just walking across the screen. You don't know what they're usually doing. After replaying it a couple of times, I found out that what they do is they go through and they clear the entire land. What they do is, when you defeat a bandit, you get influence. This influence helps you build in, on new territories. What I think is really fun is, yes, we may end up losing a territory to them, but we can always end it back later in the game. So what will happen is they'll come in as soon as... As they spawn in to attack that army, we want to have our guys ready to come in and take their loot. I don't care that they're getting the influence. What I want is the money. We're going to need it for our own in the future. So we'll come in, take this one, then we'll come after this one. We're just going to let them take all the damage and we'll be good to go. So look forward to that later. Okay, so we're out of berries now that need to not hurt the animals too much what do we have in turn out of hides and leather you have our food stalls up they have eight sheets of leather so we've got to be careful So we should definitely have enough 14 months worth of fuel and food. Mining pit's done. Stone cutter will be done here in a little bit. Another family, so that brings us down. We're going to have a decent winter. I mean, look at the five unassigned families. Alright. Always have someone in the church. Always have somebody in the church. It will definitely increase your approval rating. Which will help you get more people in earlier on. Let's spam two people in there for right now. Where's our food looking like? Just one here. Smithy. Alright, so we are out of money. Next thing is going to be our trade. This would be good for later. Uh, we can start selling our planks first thing. That will definitely help us earn money. As soon as we start doing that, we want to start having the um, iron works built up. Normally, if we have a clay pit, I want this to go up first. I want to start doing roof tiles. That way we can sell those roof tiles because they usually sell for eight a piece, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, I've only got 86. I need to really save those for upgrades until we get to new areas. Or if I want to buy them, buying them is quite a bit more expensive, though. But for now, let's go ahead and put down a training post. Uh, having it on the King's Road is usually one of the best options. From my own testing, it's faster. Because the people coming in off of your major trade routes don't have to go through all your individual streets and towns. They'll come straight out and straight back in. 
saves yourself and everyone else some time. That's full up there. I'll go ahead and just put it here. Just put it right in the middle of the outskirts of town. Now, our livestock will be good for later. I feel like I'll kind of want this to be livestock in the middle. That should be fine. Because we want it to be close to all the fertility. I don't want to say we want to go for this quite yet. For the irrigation and fertilization, but it would be nice to have. Just depends on how we progress our town. Berries, berries, bursting with flavor and fit for a king. I should go get some berries. <laughs> they stole all of our tools. Man, these assholes, they steal everything. It'd be nice if we could uh, earn it back. All right, that's done. Livestock trading. Yeah, let's go ahead and put it in here. Like that. Sheep farm right next to it. Just a little bit of space. Counts for 16. Don't really need it right now. But it'll be good to have for later, just in case we start getting more in. How many families do I have now? Nine. I guess it's just simple enough to tell from over here. Right. We're planting and waiting. never assigned anyone to a stable. Never really saw the need to. Definitely want to put somebody full time in the storehouse. We'll put two in there for now. Alright, winter is approaching. Hmm, I do need to start getting some stone because I'm out. Okay. Oh look, and a new family starts moving in. So, between the levels of 50 and 75, you get one family per month. The higher we can get that approval rating, the better. Uh, between 75 and 100, normally you can get two families a month. You want to get that up as soon as possible in the early stages of the game. Right now, I'm not too concerned. I've got 10 families in. We started with five. So we've already doubled ourselves in our first year. That's pretty good progress, if you ask me. Now let's look at upgrading these. Food style. Yeah, okay. So that's our biggest problem right now. We're running out of food. Well, we got plenty of berries. But we need our vegetables to start doing something. So let us go ahead and do a new burgers. Ah, oh, perfect. Look at that. All vegetables right there. They're probably getting vegetables out of this to feed people, but not enough. Now for our trading posts, let's go ahead and set up the export of planks. And then hold on, uh, press and hold left shift and you can change it by 10. 
I find 40 is a good number to keep around for any kind of builds that would be coming up. Go back to our people. Do two of them. Take you off for now. Take you off for now. Stone cutter is full. Just like that. Cool. Now let's go ahead and start somebody on mining so I can make those roof tiles for later. Uh, really good. First thing to do with it. Upgrade your church. The higher the church level, the more approval you have. Gonna put down. Did not. Okay. Play a furnace. Definitely the next thing to do. That way we can work on that. What else do they steal? Nine firewood. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that'll be fine. Right next to the storehouse. Alright. Five timber. And yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We're low. Make that the highest priority, that way we can keep stacking. Alright, we just made a little bit of money. Alright, so we did sell a little bit. Right here, establish a trade route. After paying to establish a trader, a dedicated traveling merchant will regularly visit your region to trade this specific type of good. 100% get this anytime you can. We pay the two gold for it, or we pay the seven gold for it, and somebody will come and buy regardless if we have somebody in this trading post or not. If they come by, they're going to put money on the counter and say, hey, thanks for the lumber. Every time. So, it's really good to set up a trade route first thing. Look at that. Now we're up to 20. Keep watching this. 44. So, we came in and bought all my wood. Just like that. Now we're up to 93 regional wealth. Regional wealth is accumulative to everybody in the village. Not one person has it all. This is for the entire benefit of the village. It's completely different from our treasury, which is our personal wealth. That's what we use to hire mercenaries. Now, we can tax them to go in, fill up our treasury. Not important right now. Because of the way that we'll be doing our guerrilla tactics later. We want to keep our people happy as long as possible. That way we can bring in more families. And then, when we're certain that we can afford our first uh, Melissa or first military, then we can really start taking all this out. For our next plot of land, I'd love to have this for the infinite clay. Personally, food is really good, especially infinite wild animals. Like, a rich deposit really does boost your efficiency when it comes to clothes making. Let's see here. Okay, so we actually have enough now for our clothing style supply. Two meat, four bread, nine berries. What do we get the bread from? <laughs> Don't tell me that's like year old bread. Jeez. Alright. One of the things I want to say. It would be nice to upgrade the burgages. It's not necessary. Not, not for farmlands. This will not help you as much as I want it to. It will not help you unless you do down through here. Because remember, in the last episode, this will be our joiners. This will be our archery makers, our fletchers, everything like that. The closer they are to the marketplace, the better. So we'll go ahead and start off and upgrade these two. 
That'll put us at the next level for the medium village. And we can work on our next point. Better deals is really good. Because if you're missing items, you can buy them for the same price that you exported as. Really nice. But we need to make sure we accumulate our wealth first. That should give us... Yeah, okay, cool. So we have enough for our uh, militia now. Alright, clay furnace is done. That's just about out. When that completely empties, it'll get off the map. And uh, we can just build over it. Just like everything else. However, we'll go ahead and start working on our manor. Manor placement is usually very important. On this side of the map, you want to be on top of a hill. So as you can see, this is just pretty flatlands. But if we put it over in this area, am I thinking of the light place? Let's see here. Yeah, have it up in here. Anything that attacks from this way or attacks from this way will then have a debuff. It's literally fighting an uphill battle. They actually lose morale faster fighting uphill battles. Let's see here. I think that's what I'll do. We'll have it... right up here for now. You see the lines? These are... Uh, Ah, oh, hell, what the fuck? The geographical lines that tell us how steep a hill is. As you can see, too steep. That's what you want to see right outside of your house. So we'll go ahead and put it right in here. How do I want to set it? Alright, now we have garrison towers, outer towers, walls and gates, tax office. Unfortunately, the tax office is just cosmetic, doesn't work right now. Uh, I did hear that they have a new patch coming out in beta, which makes all this work. Great, don't really need to worry about it right now. But we'll go ahead and just commit for this alone, for the manor. get the road to fit right. Yep. Alright, when we do our battles, it would be good to have, uh, Archers don't do a whole lot of damage right now, but because they have a wide range reach, whenever we get our first set of archers, you only want one. They're good for distraction. Set them up here along the wall. Shoot down at them. When they charge uphill, they're going to lose a lot of strength going uphill. Alright, so now we got a new development point. Foreign suppliers is nice, but definitely not good. As far as I can tell, it gives you just one month's worth of food and one month's worth of uh, firewood. Doing it the way I'm sowing you, you should never have to worry about it. This one's nice, doubles all berry deposits. Really cool. Don't need it right now. Orchardry 
I feel like is the next best thing because apple orchards produce food every year going up until they hit three years and then at three years it's maximum capacity with a very large orchard you're gonna have so many apples you're not gonna know what to deal with them and then you can sell them to go into our next year i feel like orchardry is going to be the best way to help provide food because we have been hurting on food for a while now How do I want to go about this? We need a really large plot. We also want to have it upgraded to full family, just like all these other ones. That way we can have all the apples. <laughs> Two people working on one farm is better than anything else because these people won't go over to the next Burgess and help them out. Just tell them, you know, suck on tit. There we go. I personally like putting them around my uh, churches i feel like it's the right thing to do wow oh, look at that one house up here the other one down here not exactly how i would do it Too steep to build. Yeah, I mean, look at that. So we will do it on this side. I really love the fact that this will go the way we want it to without having to worry too much about it. So because this is too steep to build on, it'll be perfect for growing on. So we have a regular house here, everything downhill. Yeah, look at that. That'll be great. Then we can turn that into an orchard. Right, let's look at what we have to trade. Nine hides. The leather we need all the leather we can get berries meat wheat construction yeah as you see here roof tiles they sell for a lot oh. about tools how much do you stop six okay I'm actually doing something new here because I don't have a rich deposit to work off of. Smithy. I believe it's one to one. Where's my bloomer yet? Nope. Do I have any whining? I do not. Let's go ahead and just throw all of our guys in there for mining right now. I have no one to work on the manor. Uh... Since we're not trading right now, let's go ahead and take everyone out of here. convert this to apples go ahead and get an early start on it and add another family to it I feel like it's the right thing to do to add an orchard right next to the church I don't know it just seems like the right thing all right now we're up to 13 families of course they did just about to hit 75, which is good for our pot growth. Still doing great on fuel. Third Bandit Camp, where are you at? 
All right, so they're the furthest out. That might be the one that they go for first. Not sure I want to proceed with that. We'll see when they start coming in. All right, new retinue assembled. So now that we have the retinue, we don't have to worry about sending our uh, villagers out. We can just use the retinue because they're not going to do nothing anyways. They're great for fighting. But we're going to use our workforce to stay here. And our retinue to go steal stuff. <laughs> Alright, raiders near. We received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. We had tracked their movements. And then their army spots in. I'm not sure if that's meant to be raiders or not. Because these are usually going to be... The uh, mercenaries that you can buy from the tab. As you can tell, they bought two of them. Alright, let's go ahead and select our retinue. Actually, let's see where they go first. Now they're going straight down to this one. Alright. Always save it. It may not work the way you want it to. But this is a good save point. So we can start being sneaky. Because you don't want to waste too much time just staring at these guys going, Oh, we're, we're going to get it now. Yes! yes. <laughs> I love listening to these. The voice actors, I think they're really good. Alright, polish is available. This is really good. Because we're focusing on orchardry, and we're focusing on uh, armor making, and we're going to be doing heavy and advanced armor later, which is going to be like really in depth with our money instead of farming. Because as much as I want to do farming, I've really thought about it since I made the last video. I've got one good spot here, and a band here, and a band here. We should really look elsewhere. I mean, look at this land down here. All green. That would be great for farming. This would be great for farming. But we need to really focus on imports and exports. Which is going this way through trade logistics and better deals. This can help stave our uh, food issues or any kind of uh, armor making skill issues that we have until we can fully supply it. Because, honestly, whenever you pull out better deals, you can buy it for as much as you sell it. And I'll just show you what that looks like. You know, when you can buy all of this for three to four, two possibly. I mean, we're selling three, two, three, two. Eventually, we'll have egg production too, but that's going to be a little bit later. Because eggs don't provide as much benefits as vegetables and apples do. And then once we start selling all that, then we can worry about selling iron slabs, selling firewood, things like that. Anything to make a buck. Don't want to get too close. Gonna do another quick save here. My lord, forward! March! Advance! As soon as they spawn in. Alright, go, go, go. Alright, so they start attacking them. 
They're in a fight. They broke them. I'm gonna come over here. Grab the bandit camp. Alright. New message. When searching through the enemy's belongings, you find a stash of goods that can be sent to your people who surely need them. Though it is your right to keep it. Absolutely, we're gonna keep it. 164. That right there. Three months worth of an actual army. Yeah. Three months worth of archers. One month of actual infantry. I mean, that's really good. Going to put these guys to the test. They're going to be hiking forever. Alright, run. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Alright, and... Take it. Alright. Now, we've got the first two. We're going to go down and wait for this one. That one's going to go for our hometown. So that's actually going to help out. As you see here, they're capturing Imnruth, which is this one. Why are you taking that one? You know what? I'm okay with it. Go ahead, take it. These guys are fatigued. <laughs> Doing good though. All right, and now we have all three bandit camps. We get a little bit of influence for doing this. Not a ton. Well, actually, no, that's from the church. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Alright. Now, we're sending this one to town. They're at 209. Alright. So right there, we went from being completely broke to having 319 in our personal treasury, 209 in our regional. This is really going to help us out. This first year is the most important when it comes to your guerrilla tactics because now I pretty much guarantee you don't have to worry about it again. Which is nice because they don't get pissed off and go, hey, he stole our stuff and, you know, try to take it from you. They also get off your map sooner because there's annoying another ruler's army recited thing. When they get off the map, it'll stop slowing you down and you'll feel so much better about it. So, let's recap. We got ourselves another vegetable farm. We now have ourselves a fairly large apple orchard. Look at that. Beautiful. This should really start helping us out on our food supplies. Where is our... Forager hook. Put two of those in. Upgrade that. That's what all this regional what's going to. Oh man, we went up a lot. 343, what happened? Do we sell it once? Oh, we did. We sold a bunch. Damn, so that went up quite a bit. So our wild animals, our berries are looking good now. We did skip through the month of March, but uh, I feel like it was worthwhile. Hundred and ten planks, fourteen timbers. All 
right, now that we're at our first year, our Tithe, let's see here, we're hunting on food. Let's not worry about a Tithe right now, because Tithe usually takes our food. Land tax, to keep our approval lost to a minimum, 5%. I feel like it's a good starting number. I don't know if it's 5% of the entire region. I believe it is. I strongly believe it is, at least. But 5% of your regional well out of 343%, no problem. Alright, we've been mining for a while. What are we at? 144 iron ore, 86 clay. So is the clay fully harvested? It is. Alright, so now we want to take you out of there. Put you into the clay furnace. Put somebody in the bloomery. Okay. I love this music. shaping up pretty well. You know, they said that this is a... Uh, oh, he's sick. They said that this is a work-in-progress feature. I really hope they keep it. I really enjoy the fact that I can get down here and walk among my people. Vegetables are looking really good. So from what I can tell, this man... Oh, hey, look. The doors actually work. Well, one of them. <laughs> yeah, there's a piece of iron ore. Let's see how they have this set up. I actually haven't watched this before. There's no physical item for the iron slab yet. Oh, wait. Ooh, that's actually really quite nice. And yeah, no physical items for the transport in between, but hell, that looks good. Your iron slab looks like a rock, sir. You need to do better. <laughs> yep, that's three iron slabs. That's right. Alright. So, let's just recap. We went from having nine families to 17. Our approval rating's high. We've got a 5% tax rate. We went from 0 to 319 
personal will, 0 to 343 regional will. Our public order is good because we have our administrative buildings. We went from nothing to regular church. We're starting to build our medium village up. We need 10 level 1 burgage plots and 5 level 2 for our next area. And that's going to be these two here and one more. I'll, I'll build it over here probably. And then we can do our large village upgrade. But right now we're looking really healthy. This is usually how I like to play it. Our, our food is a little low. So I'll probably put someone else on our... Oh, actually, you know what? I forgot. Policies. Right here. Because we're not doing farming... Hunting grounds. Wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast. At the cost of 50% reduced yields from crops. As far as I can tell, that's only for the... Uh, for the, or for the farmland, not for the berry plots and things like that. But, uh... Yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna do that, because the next policy, citizens skip every fifth meal. That's an approval loss. Don't want it. So, hunting grounds, good way to go. Now, these are gonna spawn back faster. I'll have more leathers and meat. But, really awesome so far. A workers' camp. Ooh, I need to get rid of the workers' camp. Go ahead and do that. That way they can take all that inside. You know what? I didn't think about that. It started raining as soon as I deleted it. <laughs> do we have enough? So, that's the way I start off my first year. Right here. I feel like this is the most efficient way for somebody that's looking to have a semi-relaxed forward slash... You know, we're still in... We're, we're being thieves because we're thieving from the thieves. You know, they're still in our lands. I think I can steal all the money that they were supposed to earn from those uh, raiding parties. Because now, they're not going to have a high treasury. I feel like that's fair. But, uh, yeah, if you guys have any comments, lay them on me. You know, I really appreciate that I did get a new subscriber. So, honestly, thank you so much for that. It's uh, a real confidence boost, because this is the first time I've made a video in a while. And, uh, let me, let me just say, you know what, I'll do this. Let me do this right quick. Alright, Captain Plankton. Thank you, partner. Seeing your comment actually made my day because it's the first time I've made a video in a while. Especially since I've uh, really wanted to focus first on my daughter. So, Captain, I really appreciate that. I hope you're enjoying what's going on here and seeing exactly why I build things the way I do. I feel like this is just accumulated knowledge. You know, I've watched some other people make these YouTube videos. But you're absolutely right. People do conflict each other. I feel like always... Do your layout first. It's the most important. Have a layout set. Then the next thing you want to do is rush yourself to get higher burgages. In our next episode, we're going to uh, probably go up to a large village. More than likely, we'll go up to a large village. We're going to keep working on our food supplies. That way, we're not starving everybody. Because four months is not good. I personally like having up to six months at any given moment. We'll also expand, or expand, expand our manor. That way we can have some uh, towers that will shoot out, have some walls block off down through here, maybe some archers to go along from there. But we can start selling all of our equipment that come out of these burgages next. But on that note, thank you guys so much. You know, it's a really fun game. Just let me know if there's any specific questions you have. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. Be safe, everybody. Love you all.